Edwards history regarding damage. That's Jeff Edwards, the president and CEO of the Southside Electric Cooperative, talking about the ice storm that hit our region February 13th. The outages lasted nearly two weeks. At one point, more than 46,000 of the co-op's customers, or members as they're called, were in the dark. That's 81% of the homes and businesses that get their power from the SEC. Some members tell CBS 6 they feel Southside did not do enough prep work, but Edwards says there was only so much they could do. Majority of the outages were created by trees that fell on the line, and all, uh, less than 5% of those were actually inside the prescribed right-of-way that we can legally maintain. We currently maintain a 30-foot right-of-way. That's what we're legally able to do. If we want to increase that, we would have to seek approval from our membership and get easements along all of those lines. We can't just expand without those easements. And the cost, which I can't give you an exact figure, but I can tell you it would be well over $1 billion if we expanded to a 100-foot wide right-of-way. So why did the Mecklenburg Electric Cooperative, which operates in the same region and is also heavily wooded, seem to fare much better during the ice storm and its aftermath? So, you know, I pulled numbers related to Mecklenburg at the peak of this. They had um, less outages than you did. I think mm -hmm. you were at 81 percent and they were at uh, 58 percent. Yes. So, you know, they're saying, well, if they got the same weather, why didn't they have the same percentage of outages? How, how do you explain that? The heavy icing really appeared all, almost like a bullseye on our service territory. Uh, we were indeed the epicenter of the ice storm, and that heavier ice then impacted our system in a much more detrimental fashion than it did the Mecklenburg system. A number of Southside customers also contacted CBS 6 with questions about Edward's salary. Explain to your members how you got to this $1.5 million figure that you've gotten in 2018 and 2019. Yes. Um the executive management compensation level at Southside Electric Cooperative is in line with other Virginia electric cooperative executives. Uh, it's based partly on the size of the co-op and it's based partly on the experience level of the individual along with some other performance factors. The Form 990, uh, the information we provided to you earlier today, is not a very accurate indication of salary. It doesn't do a good job of separating out salary from a retirement benefit and that retirement benefit for me has been accrued over a 36-year career in the electric cooperative program. So those funds have been placed in there by the two co-ops I worked at previously, along with Southside Electric Cooperative that I've worked at for the past 14 years. Um, comparing salaries among board members in co-ops in Virginia, it looks like the board members at Southside are getting more money than many other board members, to include the chairman who's getting like the highest I could find among several co-ops in the state. They are the reason we're a community-led organization. They represent their membership quite well. They do compare their salaries to other co-ops, again, of like size, and that's based on a report that's provided by the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association every other year, and that's how they determine their compensation levels. I asked Jeff Edwards what changes he might make going forward. He said they will look into adding another call center to handle outage calls. He also said they plan to work on communication with the public. Working for you, I'm Melissa Hippolyte for CBS 6.